نه بلند بگو که صدا دیم داد بزن برغاوه came here around 2001 because my uncle uh, he lived here uh, I was 10 years old when uh, we got approved for a visa and uh, after that we went to Turkey to uh, see if we get an actual visa to come live here then we went to Turkey and then we got approved and I came back I finished fourth grade then uh, the summer of that year we came to US No, I spoke no English at all. And then I came here, then little by little, I took class, ESL class. They didn't let me stay in class because I didn't understand anything, so I had to go to this ESL class, English as a second language. And then I used to listen to it, like a little headphone, cars, and things, stuff like that. But I picked up the I'm gonna be the best, I'm gonna reach my goals, I'm gonna be the greatest story ever told. Nima T, yeah, a young immigrant Used to be one, but now I'm a citizen It's a great 2001 was when I came here and then 2003 is when I got into hip-hop, you know I didn't get to record it, but I just listened to it and I really liked it, you know Eventually, I think 2006 it was that um, It was a friend of my cousin, Rosh He was, he brought in a CD And uh, he was a, uh, he was a Persian rapper, his name was Zed Buzzy and uh, you know we was uh, we never we would not not introduce to that game at all. So he brings the CD. He's like, hey man, I want you to take this out. So he pops in the CD, and I remember me and Nemo were sitting in the car, and uh, so we just listened to it. And just right off the bat, it was like, oh my god, you know, I was I was I was just in shock that something like that even existed. <laughs> That changed my entire life. That changed from that day on, nothing has been the same. That probably my direction went from here to just here. So once we once we heard that, it was like, well, this is something that I can do. And this is something I want to do. And we already like hip hop music, we already listened to it, but we never thought about becoming artists. You know, we never thought we had the ability or the passion or the drive, we never thought we had that. But then once we started growing the studio, as we got better, you know, because the lyrics got better, the flow got better, the message on the song got better, quality, everything. It's, we evolved every day, and I think as an artist, that's something you have to do. Our first major show, um, I had a friend uh, named Lil Ripper, and uh, he just called me up one day and said, like, do you want to do the show with me? And I'm like, sure, you know. And uh, we had done a lot of songs together, and um, I guess uh, we just did two songs in that show, and 
it was it was just a crazy feeling, you know, performing for the first time. You know, it was a really big crowd, and when by the time we got on, it was it was packed. They were all like right there in our face. So when I got on, I was like, holy, <laughs> you know, we were, I'm about to really do this, and you know, we did a song. I believe it was the, the Riders Anthem or something like that. Uh, it was it was it was dope, you know, you know, it was it was a great feeling. What you know about me, it's slow ripper. Let me show you what a pro I be. I've been young, been crazy since I rep low key and hit him with that loud noise and bounce with me with T. The what? Um, after, like I said, 9-11, is uh, a lot of things changed for me, and uh, even though I had many friends and, you know, we were cool, they still made racist comments, I just had to laugh about it, you know. So I guess, uh, you just gotta get used to it, really. The reason, like, after we started rapping, we did uh, the song How Far, it was basically about how far you gonna push me, you know, how long am I gonna take it. All this that my sound talks to me, the dad, uh, I like it, the rap music. I tell him the why you wanted to choose to rap music because the, uh, he liked it to that music to talk to people. It unfortunately happened like soon as we arrived. It was like the worst thing that could have happened. And uh, that still it scores you for life. You know, it scores you for a long time and it's a, you know, it's, it takes you through emotional roller coaster. So, how far was us coming back? Then in the end, the message is, even though we do all that, I'm still gonna walk away, and I'm not gonna act on it. So I think that was our, that's why we decided to do how far. And, uh, you know, it was good for the time it came out. You know, everybody liked it. How far will you doubt me? You know nothing about me. I'm tired of these stereotypes. Yeah. Here I come, ready or not. Check my status, check my flow. I'm the baddest you should know. I'll go ahead and put this one on here, I guess. This is like yeah, that's the first cut we did. My name is Vahid Farzana, and uh, I manage Freestyle Productions. We do uh, music videos, short films, TV pilots. For the writers, we did a music video. Two of them. Uh, two of them, yes. And one a year after that, so maybe we'll do a third one. Hopefully, so, definitely. Yeah. So uh, it was fun. I just remember that day was so cold, though. Remember yeah. that in December? And it got delayed a lot, but in the end we ended up getting. Cause you broke, you broke yeah. your foot. I uh, tore my ACL playing basketball. Yeah. So yeah, like six we months. We delayed it for. We shot in December. The next time we shot was like what March. Oh, I mean, you, you know, it was, it was a slower cut video, but the song matched. Yeah, it. It the was, song. I think matched. it's like we. It was perfect. The song was perfect. You know, the, the your quality, the camera, your work was perfect on it. And the staff, we didn't have a staff. Yeah, we were looking for this yesterday as we were walking by. We shoot these uh, windows over here. Hey, yo, what's up? This is the riders behind the scenes of the video shoot. How far will it go? We stop production. We're blessed. We couldn't be happier. It's definitely it. We're doing it, baby. To all you haters, we're going to drop your jaws. Bank on that. <laughs> this is Royce. Wave to the camera. Come on, Royce. Wave. This is behind the scenes. We had, like, we had no budget. Yeah, there was nothing. It was just us. Uh, it was we just had a dream. Come help. We had a dream. <laughs> it's like, that was it. it we was, had a camera, rappers, and a dream. That's all we had. Camera, rappers, and a dream. You know? And they get a boom box to and play. And they get a boom box. <laughs> <laughs> we shot with a boom box. You know, somebody was over there hitting play. <laughs> Can't wait till the end of the story. Checking one around, tell your homies it ain't money. Respect they owe me, otherwise we'll fight to the sunrise. Bring the weakness that you talk out to let you know. Hop this name, close your eyes and inject this pain. What you cats know about this? They don't know nothing, I mean. They don't know what it takes. No, they don't. Sitting your ass at home on the couch. We out here grinding, making dreams come true. It's the star of the video right here. Yeah. Yeah. This guy right here. I'm gonna do a track with him. Day two. Day two. How far music video? 
Jib shots. Jib shots. What you need, what you got, won't be enough to make me stop. Make me stop in your dreams, better back out when I hit the scene. Hit the scene like a play, we make history every day. We won't stop, we go hard, the riders won't break apart. As far as work goes, I gotta wake up every day. 5.45 is when I head out the house. And it's kinda tough to do because I got the morning shift. So I gotta wake up every day in the morning, head to the store. I work in the gas station right now. You gotta wake up every day, early in the morning. And then after that, I got school at nighttime. But it's the only thing that fits my schedule right now. Get there around 6 o'clock, do what I'm supposed to, and get out there as soon as I can, you know. But sometimes time goes so slow. After work, I just go home, take a quick shower, and then go to school. I first started making music, I didn't know how to like uh, play the piano or play any kind of instrument. It's like mostly by ear. Back then, like I didn't know, like I wasn't too into recording and stuff. I didn't know how to record. But then eventually, you just we just built the studio, you know. The studio is built in my room. I always have access to it whenever I want and like whenever I get off work the first thing I do is just like just turn on my computer and listen to music and make music and uh, this is my studio right now as you can see basically when I make my music or when I try to record something I listen to something I like and then get on, on, on this piano right here and then after I'm done we just record it with this mic and then it takes about a week or so I listen to it mix it adjust it Basically, then put it out. And uh, like I said, I don't play. What I do is just like, I just get the chords down. I hold it down, whatever sounds right. Then I record the chords, and then I go back, and then all those chords, I figure out a melody within those chords. That sounds tight, and then I'll record that. We rocked that shit, bro. This was a good show we did at Persian Reunion, uh, Persian New Year's. So right here is where we first performed our first Persian hip hop show for all the Iranians. This is like the park where everybody gets together once a year for the Persian New Year's. And uh, it was a great show when we did it. It was like the first time that Oklahoma Iranians have seen like a rap performance. And after the show, we got a lot of good feedback. It was a successful show, to be honest. You know, I can tell everybody had a good time. <laughs>
first major show in the Iranian scene. It was uh, it was in Houston, Houston, Texas, and it was uh, for a singer, a major singer named Andy. Andy is like the biggest pop star in Iran for like the past 20 years. Back then when I was a little kid, I remember I used to dance to his songs and like, you know, and now here I am opening up for him. Ava Center, it's going down. Hell yeah. It's about to be a good The show. weather is perfect. The weather is perfect. Beautiful. It's got Beautiful. that California weather, only it's Houston. Yeah. H-Town, what's up? H-Town, what's up? All so right. you got to get it, get it, clip of the manager. What's oh, up, manager? It's the, it's my hey, manager, play the part. Just a fan. <laughs> Play the damn part. He's just a fan. So as soon as the money comes in, then he's a damn manager. We went to Houston. Like we got there at like 12 o'clock, and then he was there in the auditorium, and he was just there until like 7 o'clock. The show started at 8. You know, he was just trying to sound check. And to me, that's inspiring. You know, that's a hard artist. You know, working. <laughs> Tech nine. Tech nine. Tech nine. Tech nine. Tech nine is like my biggest influence right now. <laughs> Me and Tech Nine was like the biggest moment for me because what I enjoy about him is that he could be serious, he could be funny, and he still have his crowd move to his music. Something that I just remember like him saying is just like you gotta get your fans one by one, like city to city. You know, if they don't really see you, they don't know you, they're not gonna remember you. Like something about like you hear a song on the radio, it's hot, and you might know the lyrics all the way, but after the song dies down, you know, you're not gonna follow up to that, okay, who's this rapper? You're just gonna, oh that's a good song, but if you really reach out to your fans like city to city, meet them in person, then they always follow you. Well, uh, you know, as far as family goes, and uh, it's definitely an interesting situation because they don't, they don't really accept, they don't really know what this is. You know, they didn't grow up with hip hop. They grew up in a whole different place. So, they, it's not that they don't accept or they don't like. It's they don't understand it. This business is very, very hard because the too many uh, people uh, with more experience for the dad music in the United States. Can I honestly say, we're the only Iranian rappers in Oklahoma. We always have this conflict of, hey, what are you doing? You know, there's no money in this. And focus on school, you know. The whole Iranian stereotype of you come to America, you'd be a doctor, a lawyer, you know, be something like that. And what do you music, you know? So to me, that's the biggest accomplishment. If I ever like make money or go famous, it's just like I want to do something to show my parents, hey, look, you know what I mean? You see all this in the mix, noise. Oh! Not everybody. I need you to make some noise. Support from the family, support is not there, and, and that's the truth be told. You know, what I try to tell them is that there's only two ways that the riders can go. Like I said, me and Arash, we discussed, it's like there's two ways that we could go. We could either go really big. Make it to places but no person has ever made it. Be the next big things. Or we can always uh, be that local act. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to be. Yeah.
It's an album release party. Album release party. More people need to know you. People really gotta respect you. People really gotta respect me. You want success, how do you get success? You don't just sit here, make albums, and then just have it out and have everybody download it because it's new to you. People gotta come out to it. You gotta have something for yourself. All right, let me tell you this, right? It's not gonna be that epic, massive, forts and shit that you're looking for. You gotta think big, but understand what it is, man. I mean, even if he's five people, he has an event. Like, you know, you, as you can see with all the people around, they, they got, they're kind of like me, you know, being Indian, I got some people to represent, and they definitely got some people to represent. It's not about how soon you do it. It's about how right you do it. Get that through your head. Are you in it? That's the question I'm asking you. Are you in it? So it's 9.35. We got a decent amount of people show up, you know, and to me it means a lot because even though it's a small crowd, you know, they showed up just for our, our event, you know, usually it's everybody else's event and they just join us, but tonight it was strictly for us and that's why it matters a lot, you know. So hopefully after this, uh, it just keeps growing, you know, and we're going to keep pushing for it. It's hard, but that's why it's called Road to Success. They're 100% Persian. 100% hip hop. More successful you get around here, it's gonna creep up. It's coming. It's Remember, I said it.